Last year, I made a series of overview videos looking back at NECA's Aliens line, and I thought it was time to take a look at the Predator universe, because I've picked up a number of these as well across the years. However, this won't be a complete overview because, well, as you can see on screen, NECA have produced an incredible amount of Predator figures, and I certainly don't own all of these, and it would take forever to go through line by line. But I will pick out and highlight a few favourites, and I thought I'd start off by looking at the Predator 2 offerings, and in particular, the Ultimate Battle Damage City Hunter. This figure was essentially a reissue of an already existing figure, but it is an updated version of that self-same figure, so I thought it would be fun to take a look at this one. And of course, it was released for the 30th anniversary of Predator 2, a film that wasn't particularly well regarded at the time, but has grown in appreciation over the years. So I'm going to dive straight in with this one by starting looking at the packaging, and I have to say I really like the approach to this. Now this is pretty standard for Nika these days, their figures do tend to come in this slightly oversized box packaging, which is quite nice, and it's very well presented. We can see this fantastic artwork here on the front of the packaging. Uh, I love this, this is original artwork, and they've done a really nice job of capturing one of those key scenes from Predator 2. Uh, I think this is really evocative, it's really moody, I love the colouring on it, and I just think it's really, really presentable, so I have nothing but good things to say about this. The side panel is really nicely done as well, we can see the Predator 2 logo there, and this is obviously in a foil font, so this looks really, really good, it catches the light just right, it's nice and reflective, and at the bottom, in the, uh, the, the Hunter Triangle, we can see, obviously, that this is number 5 uh, in the series of 30th anniversary figures, so this is really presentable, I think this looks really good on the shelf, you can stack these up with the other figures in the line, and it's going to look pretty consistent, but also very colourful and attractive. Then, if we flip over to look at the reverse of the packaging, we actually have an awful lot of text about Predator 2 on the back of this box, which is pretty cool. I do like these photos that Nika have taken. They're so, so good at taking fantastic photos of their figures, and this just looks absolutely brilliant. So, they've recreated some key scenes from the film here, and it just looks absolutely brilliant. What you will notice down the right-hand side panel, though, is some of the other figures in this line, because there were an awful lot of Predators <laughs> released as part of the Predator 2 <laughs> line. And you can see a full list of those there. So this looks pretty fun and very displayable. And finally, if we open the front fold of the cover... Mm. And finally, if we open the front fold of the packaging, we can see this interior artwork and another fantastic photo from Nika here showing off the City Hunter in all his glory with a fantastic backdrop behind him. And then on the right-hand side, we have the window display showing off the Predator himself. Uh, looking pretty cool, I've got to say. I really like how they've used the interior inlay to replicate the Predator ship at the end of the film as well. Again, really helps the figure pop out the packaging, but it just looks absolutely phenomenal. So you can put this on display like this and it just looks great. Now, to be fair, most Predators tend to look pretty similar. There's little nuances between them, but in the main, they are pretty consistent. However, this one really does stand out because it's got some very noticeable differences. For starters, I really like this head sculpt. It does come with two heads in the packaging, but this one with that sort of breathing mask, I think is really, really cool. Very, very different. Not something we see on most alternate predators at all. So this is a really cool, very distinct look for this predator. I really like that we have the top of the head there uh, versus the, the mechanical mask underneath. Now we only barely glimpse this in the movie, but from what I can tell, this seems to be a pretty good likeness. <laughs> I couldn't really fault it. I think it's a uh, pretty solid stuff. It's very nicely sculpted. And of course, the paint apps are magnificent on this thing. Uh, lots of different colors, lots and lots and lots of detail, right down to the, the whites of the eyes there. I think this looks very, very impressive and they've just done a tremendous job as you'd expect from Nika they're on top of the game here and this looks absolutely fantastic the other key standout, of course, is the fact that he, he is missing half his limb. <laughs> we can see here that obviously he's missing his forearm. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic moment in the film, uh, and it's really cool to see that replicated here. So we can see that obviously half his forearm has been chopped off there, and we can see the blood uh, coming around it. I think that's very, very nicely done. The only criticism I have is, of course, we can see that gaping peg hole, which does look quite clumsy. Now, that's because obviously we actually have the forearm that we can actually attach which we'll take a look at a little bit later but if you're a purist and you don't really like that and you're not planning to use the forearm then maybe you could fill that in yourself. 
Aside from that, we can see that obviously this is a recycled predator body mold that we've seen on many other predators. It does have the enhanced articulation, so we can see obviously it's got that uh, line there between the upper and lower torso. Uh, and of course, most of the pieces here are recycled from the City Hunter figure that we've seen previously. But all very nicely sculpted, again, well painted as you'd expect, and it looks pretty consistent and pretty faithful with what we see on screen, which is fantastic. The addition here, though, of course, is the extra blood effects, which I think look really, really cool and add a lot of colour to this figure, which is brilliant. Likewise, if we look at the reverse of the figure, we can see just an incredible amount of detail, love and care gone into this figure. We can see a fantastic sculpt, lots and lots of individual grooves, bits and pieces, netting, and then of course these fantastic paint apps that really capitalise on all of this to really make this figure pop and look authentic and real and gritty and textured, and it just looks fantastic. So top marks to Nika, they continue to knock it out of the park with their predators. If you look at the left shoulder, you can see this groove here, which is where the shoulder cannon normally goes. Obviously, that has been omitted for this version of the figure to be consistent with how we see him on screen at this time when he's battle damaged. And I thought I should also point out that there is a wire coming from his breathing mask that doesn't go anywhere, uh, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, and I felt like that maybe they should plug into his belt or into his backpack or something. So it's a little bit odd that it just kind of goes nowhere, but that is how it is intended. On his right arm, he does have that gauntlet there with their standard Predator blades that we've come to know and love from this line. They do slide in and out of the gauntlet as well. He also has his various pouches as well. These tend to be quite flimsy because they're held together with a very thin rubber line, and I'm always very scared that these are going to snap off and break, so do be careful with these. There's nothing spectacularly different about his legs or his shins. As you can see, this is pretty standard stuff that you'd see on most Predators in some way or other. And likewise, their feet are pretty consistent with most other Predator releases. So nothing particularly new here, but I would say that this is a slightly brighter version. All the colours seem to be a little bit brighter than we've seen on previous versions of this particular version of the Predator. Moving on to articulation then, he does have a pin in his head, which means he can move his head from side to side with no real issues, but it will not look up or down or lean left and right. It's not a ball joint. But he does have ball joints in his shoulders and he can lift his arms up and out and thankfully that shoulder pad there is a compliant rubber piece so that will not hinder the articulation whatsoever. As you can see there is a complementary bicep swivel as well and there is a double joint at the elbow uh, which will allow the arm to lift up to about 90 degrees. There's also a pin swivel at the wrist so that wrist can rotate all the way around and hinge forwards and backwards as well. But the arm with the gauntlet blades that is going to be a little bit restricted. There's a ball joint in the waist, so he can rotate from side to side, lean left and right a little bit, and even bend forwards a little bit as well. Now, it's not a huge range of motion, but he can do that, which is great. There is another ball joint in the top of the torso, but I wasn't really able to get an awful lot out of this. In fact, I could barely get it to move at all. There's more ball joints in the hips, the legs will kick out to the side, and you can use this as an upper thigh swivel as well to get them to move from side to side, which is great. Now the legs will kick forwards a pretty healthy distance and they'll go back a little bit as well, which is great. There's double joints at the knee, so you can get that lower leg all the way back there uh, to the, this lower back, which is fantastic. And then there is another ball joint at the ankle there, so the foot will turn from side to side, but it'll also hinge forwards and backwards. And this joint is invisible, so that's really cool. He also comes with a whole host of extra goodies, including the attachable missing forearm, three alternative left hands, an open and closed version of the Razor Disc, as well as both a closed and open version of his hunting spear, an alternate maskless head, and the empty mask. The alternate maskless head is pretty cool, again, full of detail, fantastic paint apps, and just looks really, really good. We don't really see too much of the maskless version of the Predator in the film, but what we do see, this looks pretty authentic and pretty screen accurate. So, again, I think they've done a pretty good job, all in all, with this sculpt. It's great that we have the option to attach the lower forearm. It's very easy to just slot that into place, although it's not particularly deep, so it has a tendency to want to pop out from time to time. And of course, when you do attach it, you're going to always see that green line there where it's a little bit disjointed. Uh, but it's nice that we have it, although for me personally, if you're buying this, you're probably going to want to display it without the arm. He has an empty slot on his belt where you can place the razor blade. Uh, this is made of rubber, so it's very accommodating, but it fits into place very, very snugly, and there's no danger of this popping out. It looks really good. 
There's also a little hook on the back of his backpack there that will allow you to place the shortened version of the hunting spear into place. And when you do, again, it looks pretty snug there. It looks really cool, just adds an extra dimension to this figure. And it's nice to be able to have a figure that can hold all of his accessories at once. And this is very cool. I did think it was worth mentioning though that I found his fully extended hunting spear to be quite difficult to get him to hold. None of the hands he comes with seem quite broad enough to be able to hold it in place and I was paranoid that I'd snap the fingers if I did so because they are a very brittle plastic uh, so I really didn't want to force them open any more than they were and they didn't seem to really accommodate this very thick staff uh, so that's just something to be aware of. He does easily and firmly grip his empty mask though and I think you can create some really cool looks like with this where it just looks like he's just literally taking it off his face. Uh, I think this is a really uh, nice touch and very, very much appreciated. Uh, and if we look at it from the reverse we can actually see all the detail on the inside of the mask as well so I really like that they've covered that. Both discs can be kind of tricky to get into his grip depending on what hand you're using but you can usually get his fingers in to some of the grooves and holes in there to create some interesting looks and it will fit fairly snugly when you persevere with it. As a quick comparison I thought I'd put him next to the original City Hunter release which came as part of a deluxe 2 pack. And obviously this is based on a figure that wasn't an ultimate version, this was the standard Predator at the time, although it did have the ball joint in the hips which is pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much the same Predator with the same colourings, except this new release obviously has a lot brighter colours, has enhanced articulation, particularly in the chest torso area, and just looks a little bit more vivid and colourful. So there you have it, a pretty cool addition to the Predator lineup. Now, if you're a Predator fan, if you like Predator 2, then you're probably going to want to pick this guy up if you've not bought one previously. I think even if you have the standard City Hunter where he doesn't have any of the battle damage, you're probably going to want this guy because it's a really cool variant to have. And even if you have, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 uh, Predators already, if you don't have this one, then I do feel like this one is definitely worth getting because it's so distinctive and different to any of the other Predators, purely because because he is missing that arm and he has the blood splatter. I think that is such a cool look and, and very worth your time. Now, if you already bought the previous battle damage version, uh, I'm not sure if this version is really strictly uh, necessary, whether he's worth the double dip for the slight improvements into articulation. I said I couldn't really get an awful lot out of that chest joint anyway, so I'm not sure if it would be worth your time in truth. But if you don't have him, I do think this guy, this is the one to pick up. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.